The day has finally arrived where car prices are starting to drop down and the place that we are starting to see that first and foremost is in dealer auctions. If you're someone that is serious about flipping cars, you are going to want to make sure you watch this video. We are going to be going on a deep dive walkthrough of what it's like going to dealer auctions. Get your notebook out and get ready to take some notes. What's up guys, my name is Jamal from Flipping University. In this channel, I help people go from amateur to expert flipping cars so that they can build a life of freedom doing whatever they want, whenever they want. And I'm gonna be posting up at least one video per week, so make sure you stay tuned. Now, before we go into it, yes, don't worry, I'm still gonna be doing this series, flipping $1,000 to $100,000. If you're following me along with that, Thank you, I appreciate it. But as a quick update with that, I did get a little sidetracked. I had a lot of things to do before I could actually focus on selling that car. So the series will be continuing soon, do not worry. But for the time being, I also wanna help you guys out with something else. When I first got access to dealer auctions myself, there was no videos out there explaining the real in-depth process of what it's like actually buying and selling cars with an auction. So this video is gonna be for those people that was exactly in that same position that I was when I first got started. And just as a thank you for actually clicking onto this video, I wanna just give you guys two different things. First thing, I'm just gonna be giving you guys a free cheat sheet that you can use whenever you're gonna be buying or selling any car that you're gonna be getting. This cheat sheet is something that you can just download onto your phone and just carry with you for any car that you're gonna be checking out just to make sure that whatever car that you get is actually a great deal. It's not gonna be some lemon that you're gonna waste your money on. On top of that, I'm also gonna be offering free coaching for anyone that's actually looking to get auction access just like I have. For either of those two things, just go into the link in the description below. And we are here at the auction right now. It's like seven in the morning. This is around the time that you should be trying to get to the auction. The auction actually starts around nine o'clock in the morning. But usually when you first get there, you want to give enough time so that you have enough time to check through the cars that you want to see before they start going through the run lanes. That's the building that I'm going to over there. It's kind of hard to see with that sunlight in the way, but it's a decimal auction. The first thing that we're going to do is just go into the building. We're going to register ourselves to be logged in for the day. We're just going to scan our auction access card. With the auction access card, there's an app where you can just have it on your phone and scan it up, or you could actually have the physical card with you. But let's go inside and take a quick look at that. As you can see, I just scanned up my auction access card. It looks like I'm the 41st person to actually come into here. So before we go into anything else, I'm gonna knock those 41 other people out so that they don't go bidding on my cars. Now, nah, let me stop. But really, that number that you're getting is really just a number that's just gonna be identifying you when you're actually gonna be bidding on the cars. And as you can see, here we are at the auction. With this auction, there's probably around a thousand cars to choose from. And the cars are mainly gonna be categorized into two different ways. So the first one is categorizing it by lane. With this particular auction, it's alphabetical. So it goes from A all the way through E. This is the D lane here, as you can see. And then some other auctions, instead of it being alphabetical, it could actually be numbered. So it could be from one all the way to seven or nine or whatever the case may be. Now the run number is the second thing that actually categorizes the cars. The run number will go from one all the way to however amount of cars are in that lane. It all depends on the auction, really. It could be 200 cars, it could be 300. But the key thing to note here is that the run number is the main thing that shows when the car is actually gonna start going through the auction. And we're gonna go over what it's like when the cars are actually going through the auction. But let's just say for this car in particular, if it's run number 89, it's gonna be the 89th car to actually start going through the lane and start getting bidded on. Having that said, what I like to do when I'm going to the auctions is I like to check out the cars that have the earliest run numbers first because those are the cars, let's say if the auction starts at like nine o'clock, those are the cars that's gonna be the first ones to actually go through. If it has like a run number 100 or something like that, it might not go in through the auction until like two hours after it actually starts. And one thing I do also wanna to mention to you guys is that there's two ways that you could really do this when you're checking out the cars. Usually I think the best way, honestly, is to actually go on the website or go on the app of whatever auction you're looking at. So let's say with this one, it's a desktop. There's also other big ones like Mannheim, but you can log in online before you even come here, let's say like the night before for and you can look at all the cars that's actually gonna be going through the lanes. This is gonna save you a lot of time so you know exactly what cars you should be looking for and you don't have to be wasting time walking down every lane trying to pick apart every single car. Some people don't like to do this, they'll just get to the auction and then whatever car has the cheapest bid that comes up and it looks like a good deal, then they'll just jump on it. For me, I would never do that. Honestly, that's way too much of a risk. I worked way, way too hard for my money so I'm not trying to just be risking it up to chance. It might look like a good deal at first, but then after you end up jumping into the car, you could 
find out that it has like a blown head gasket or the transmission is messed up or something. So generally to me, I would say it's better to just do your homework so that you can come here prepared. And when you're checking out the cars, there's a couple of things that you have to know. The first thing are these cars are gonna have different lights that are attached to them. And when I say lights, I'm not just talking about headlights or taillights or nothing like that. No, I'm talking about lights that have a meaning associated with the auction. This honestly kind of depends on the auction for what car could be classified as a green light car. But if it's a green light car, it basically means that the car has somewhat of a warranty with it. So let's say if you buy the car and then something comes up with the car that isn't announced, usually auctions will have a threshold where if the part that you need to fix crosses that threshold, then you could either get your money back and return the car or you can keep the car and the person that sold the car will actually have to pay for whatever that fix is but it's really going to be determined by the auction itself of what action is taken then there's the yellow light cars the yellow light basically just means that there's an announcement that's associated with the car so it could be that the frame has penetrating rust on it it could be noted that the engine has a weird internal noise going on it could be that the transmission is slipping it could be a lot of different things but it basically just means that there's an announcement that's associated with the car and generally it's a bad announcement it's not like good things that's going on with the car not all of them are crazy bad i will say that sometimes it could just be like it has hail damage or something like that but it's some type of announcement and then there's going to be the red light cars with the cars that have a red light on it these cars are completely sold as is so once you buy the car it's yours there's nothing that you could do about it in terms of if there's a mechanical problem that comes up with the car okay i was about to jump into this car and record the next part but this car smells like butt sweat so let me jump to the next car the next key things to note is that the cars also are going to have two different categories if they're actually going to be sold with a title here or with a title absent. Title absent could also be abbreviated by just TA if you see it in the listing. If the title is marked here, then obviously it means what it means. When you're buying the car, it's gonna be expected that the title has already arrived for the car. So if you buy a car that's marked title here, usually with each auction, there's gonna be a certain amount of time where if you buy the car and the title is not there, the title hasn't shown up yet, you could actually bring the car back and get your money back. So make sure you remember this. So if you end up buying a car that you realize is actually trash, this could be your saving grace. If it's marked title here and then the person doesn't bring the title in fast enough. When the cars are sold as title absent, then again, it means what it sounds like. The title hasn't shown up for the car yet, but at the same time, there's still going to be a certain grace period of how long the title can show up before again, you can get your money back. So let's say with this auction, Odessa, even if the car is marked title absent, if I buy the car, the seller has to bring in the car within three weeks. If it's not brought in within three weeks, again, I have the option to be able to take the car back. Of course, it's going to be better if you can buy a car with a title here, but you know, it all depends. Maybe you see a good deal that comes up and a title is absent. So it's really going to be up to you what you really want to do. Oh, and by the way, for some auctions, instead of having a title absent actually marked in the listing, they might just have a blue light instead. Blue light means that the title is not there. So usually what I do, I'll do the regular checks that I normally would do looking at cars, making sure that I'm not buying some lemon of a car. I'll save whatever notes that I need to save for the car, if there's any problems with it or whatever price that I think I should be maxing out at. And then I'll just have a saved list of what cars to look for when they're going through the run lane. And then comes the fun part, which is actually bidding on the cars. I'm gonna show you guys a screenshot of what it's like when a car is actually going through the auction. And this brings me to the next point too, Auctions generally nowadays when you actually go to them, you'll have two options of how you can bid on the car. If you want to stay at the auction and bid on the cars, you'll have your bidding badge with you, which was the badge that I showed in the beginning of the video. And what's going to be happening is you're going to be hearing this guy talking dumb fast, but to be honest, you really don't have to know exactly what he's saying. You mainly just have to stare at the screen to see what the price is really going for. But the car is going to be starting off at a lower number. And then after it starts at that lower number, people are going to be taking their time as the car is in the lane to actually start bidding on the car. It's kind of different with every auction with every car but usually each bid either might go up by a hundred dollars or five hundred dollars it depends on what the price of the car is like if you're there at the auction and you're going to be bidding on the car all you have to do is just put your hand up and the person that's rambling through numbers is going to keep you as the highest bidder until someone else possibly beats you quick side tangent i tell you when i check out a beamer at these auctions they always be having a crazy amount of problems with them it looks nice but this thing is struggling to stay running but anyways, the other option that you could do is you could actually bid on the cars online instead. With this, you'll have the same option as if you were bidding on the car in person, but all you're gonna be doing is just tapping the number when they come up and bidding in increments when they go by. And it'll be 10, 2, 4, 10, 4, 10, 4. 
this is where honestly you guys have to stay disciplined you want to completely detach yourself from this car emotionally do not get emotionally attached to it and have a max number that you want to go up to if it goes above that number drop out keep your ego in check don't be acting like you're the biggest man out here do not be going into a bidding war with these other guys if they want to go overbidding on a car, that's up to them. They can go messing up their business in their own way. But let's say things went well. You checked out the car beforehand. You did your due diligence. You made sure everything was all right. You got the car for the price that you actually wanted as it went through the running lane. Now it comes time to actually pay for the car. Most auctions like these, you can't just go up and pay for the car in cash. To be honest, I don't know why. It's not like you can lie with cash. Maybe they think that you're going to be out here faking $100 bills. Usually what I do and what's honestly the quickest and easiest way is just getting a cashier's check you could do a money order usually too but i feel like the cashier's check is just the easiest way to go and i will say that generally you do have a certain amount of time that you can actually pay for the car again with each auction is different but if you don't pay for the car within that allotted amount of time either you could end up just losing the bid on the car or you could end up getting a fee per day that you don't pay for the car so make sure that you actually pay for the car on time oh and then there's also how you want to pick up the car you can either pick up the car yourself you know if you have like a dealer plate that you could throw on there or if you have a trailer where you could actually tow the car back yourself or most auctions actually have a transporting option where if you want you could actually pay the auction itself to transport it to whatever your address is and that's mainly it guys as i said in the beginning of the video make sure you go into the links below so you can get your free cheat sheet on when you're going to be checking out your next car or if you don't have auction access yourself and you want to see how you can get auction access go to the link in the description for that as well and in the next video we are going to be covering the next part of the series going from one thousand dollars to a hundred thousand dollars flipping cars selling that Ford Escape and then what car we're going to be getting with the money from that. So make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to be alerted right when the video drops. All right, guys, till next time, peace.